Hey guys, so .NET 7 was released today, um, and I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I took today to upgrade or update one of my Blazor WebAssembly projects from .NET 6 to .NET 7. And this is a good procedure and process that I normally do. So uh, yeah, hopefully it's helpful to you. Let's get to it. So first thing I always love to do when these amazing new feature sets come out is just kind of do a new project uh, select the template and kind of see what's different. So let's do that. App empty. Well, that's a new one, right? That's like the minimal template. Blazor server. Let's, I want one with the maximum stuff in it just to see if I missed anything. So go next. And I do use that. I do not use that. And I do like that stuff. And I'm going to put in none of that well maybe just that's okay put that in there and yeah let's see how that goes all right so let's just double check that this new one is so we can go to edit the project file just make sure yes it is so this stuff looks the same and just the seven and that's it. So very, nothing really changes here except this one. That's number one. Um, and so let's close that. You got your getting started page and okay. Yeah. The, all of that stuff. So what is new? Okay. So let's go through it. Some get stuff on track changes, selection, highlighting, inline rename, multi repository support document outline okay cool so let's close that let's see what else has changed we looked at that connected services there's nothing dependencies um, okay forget the analyzers for a second we already know that everything in there I'm just kind of checking it out to see um, properties let's see if there's anything specific to hot reload or anything in here um, so we nor I normally have all of that stuff and the um, web socket for the inspect URI. I don't think that's changed. We'll have to check that and the rest. So you have two profiles, HTTPS and then IIS, but the priority one is this one. Um, I don't think so. It just shows that the port to do. -do, -do. That stuff all looks fairly straightforward. Okay, so let's assume nothing there. Triple W root. Let's see what's changed in the service worker. Flying cache, I think all that stuff's new. Oh, sorry, not new, same. Same looks okay. Okay, so nothing there, nothing there. Manifest, I don't see any prefer related applications. I don't remember that one, I could be wrong. Um, index, if there's anything in a standalone Blazor WebAssembly app, it'll probably be there and, you know, little bits in here. Um, it's kind of frozen for some reason. I'll pause the video. So Visual Studio um, 17.4 did crash when I went to the index.html, so I'll have to get back there. I'm just trying the second time here, and I did double click this, so it looks like it is freezing again. Okay, so it is restarting. So what I'm gonna do is just try to open that file in Notepad and just see the changes. So actually what I did here was open it up in VS Code, so let's go through it. So obviously, you know, you have your base, anything specific in here. So that's that new, I guess, the SVG loader that you can opt into. Um, on my side, I have the Blazor um, Air UI uh, commented out. So this does not appear, my stuff. Um, this normal, normal. Okay, so basically, only thing you probably have to do is this. Now I implemented kind of my own. I just basically did the same thing that they, they were doing here, which is drop in a animation. And then what happens is um, 
in the ID part, sorry, when it creates a Blazor WebAssembly app, since this is the ID here, it'll just wipe out everything in there. Um, so you don't necessarily have to use their loader. Um, you can just drop in whatever animation you want right here and it will be blown out when this thing starts. Um, nothing else. Okay, so let's go back over to VS uh, 2022, if it will let me this time, hopefully. All right, so we are back here. Let's take a look at program. And all of that is the same. Um, I kind of moved all of the usings to a global using file and the rest is the same. So far it's like a zero, um, a zero change update. So, well, I mean, it's a good video just to you know, walk through, I guess, the thought process or like what I do anytime, either on any, on any of the um, .NET upgrades, you know, whether it's an API or whether it's console application, just kind of open the new template, look at the, your existing, see what you have to migrate. And that would be great. So, okay, so we have here not found um, and layout view. So that's just something which is a component kind of thing or whatever it is based on if they're using Tailwind or Bootstrap, whatever. So focused on navigate to the H1 selector and route data and that's kind of it. All right, so nothing here, this route view, I think that that is normal, I will see. Um, okay, found, not found. So let's go to imports. I don't see, well, I, that's, I think that's new in terms of that one too, I believe. Um, okay. Shared survey prompt. Um, okay, nav menu. Don't see anything else in here. Nav, okay, nothing. And then pages, index, good. And good yeah that was good to get date only support i think um i think that was added in seven serialization for um uh system.text.json for date only for apis it's kind of good all right so that's kind of it so let's switch over to um, an app that i have and let's see how painless it is to update Okay, so I did manage to get up the Logan Dunning Blazor WebAssembly um, web application. Got the anchor links working and all that, the pricing, all that stuff. So um, I did run into some weird stuff, but it, it had nothing to do with um, .NET 7. It had everything to do with this like scroll to component that I made. So uh, lucky enough, it was easy enough to fix. Um, so yeah, let me just switch back. So honestly, long story short, um, it was pretty, uh, painless and straightforward. Normally, you know, back in the day, sometimes it's, it's been like this where it's just update the number, update all of your packages to whatever corresponding number. And it's good. I ran into no issues here. So it was pretty amazing other than that one with the component, which was on, on, on my side. Um, and yeah, that's, it's very painless. There's nothing other than the, uh, CS proj. Um, this one here is, uh, you know, a private nougat I made the rest are, you know, base level stuff that you need for a blazer web assembly project, update this to this and works great. Um, I, I it could be a placebo effect, but I am noticing some speed improvements by just bumping the numbers. So, um, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed that quick way of updating your Blazor WebAssembly project with Azure Static Web Apps from .NET 6 to .NET 7. Also a little bonus tip, if you're doing any uh, YAML pipelines or Azure DevOps, Jenkins, or GitHub Actions, just make sure you bump your version in the whatever file you got to, uh, you know, push out your your Azure Static Web App with uh, Blazor WebAssembly. Just, um, you know, you have to use X's, not um, asterisks. But you can do stuff like this. That'll work um, if you want the next major. Probably makes sense. I'll keep it like that. 
And yeah, thanks everyone. See you next time.